time inexorably moves on. Only the eternal word abides forever. God has given us a calendar, and I often am asked by somebody sitting in an audience to be very philosophical, and they say, what is time? And I give them a very simple answer. It is this. It is a calibration of change. You measure change, whether it's the clock or whether it's the calendar. Time goes on and we measure change and time is that necessary component in that. But as I ponder the whole reality of change, I keep thinking of how the swirling emotions take over through those first process of changes. We never know what news lies ahead. And this is not to paint a grim picture, it's just to remind us that time inexorably moves on. We have things that come and go, and the chart and compass must come from our Savior, who will pilot us through the most treacherous areas of life. And that's the promise He holds for us. And so what are the three changes that come to us that bring to us this reminder? The first, you may think is obvious, it's so obvious that we miss it. It's coming from non-existence to existence. There once was a time where you were not, and then there was a time where you came into being. It is David who says this remarkably, for you created me in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before even one of them came to me. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. You and I are in the thoughts of God. How vast to me are these thoughts. How precious, how fearfully and wonderfully we are made. David said that and his son Solomon said, God's ways are as mysterious as the pathway of the wind and as the manner in which a human spirit is infused into the little body of a baby while it is yet in its mother's womb. David goes on to say, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above thy heavens? Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings have you ordained strength. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you visit him? For you made him a little lower than the angels, and you've crowned him with glory and honor. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You see, your name is of value because of the name of the one who formed you. His signature is on your soul. His signature is on your soul and mine. This forming that God gives to us for a purpose, just think about it for a moment. He made you so beautifully unique that He made you for a purpose. He brought you from non-being into being. You are not the random collocation of atoms or accidentally on this blip of time. You were designed specifically for a purpose by the living God. And if there's something that I think you ought to do for yourself this year, pause and ask God, what is it he's made you for? Wasn't it Mark Twain who said two of the greatest days in your life? Number one, the day you were born, and number two, the day you find out why. Why were you born? When he's put his signature on your soul, See, we the, as earthly parents make a lot of mistakes. We all do it. Our Heavenly Father doesn't make those mistakes. His signature is on your soul. He's called you, fashioned you, brought you from non-being into being. About a, two years ago, the man who led me to the Lord brought the Bible into my room. Some of you here know him, Fred David. I spoke to him. He was in Los Angeles, and he was literally a few days away from breathing his last. And he phones me 
And with a broken voice on the phone, he tells me, Rav, he said, sometimes I think I came into this world just to bring that Bible to you. I said, Fred, you did a lot more than that. But you see, the purpose that God will use you for, you have no idea how he can use you as salt and light in this world. Whether you realize it or not, you're an influencer. You influence people. And he brought you from non-being into being. This exclamation mark, this thing we call life, spoken into existence by God. You were brought into being from not being on being. There was a day where you were not, and all of a sudden you were. Find out the purpose for which he created you. That change from non-existence to existence is wrapped up in your individual entity. You are not a quantity. You are an entity. God has a specific purpose for you to fulfill. When you find that out, your last breath will be one of delight and saying, I'm waiting for the divine accolade.